It's perfect for busy beginners who are learning English for professional reasons. Whether you're working or would like to work in an American company, or you're dealing with American clients or partners. In this audiobook, you master must know business level phrases across 25 lessons, from learning how to formally introduce yourself, to calling in sick, and even discussing your evening plans. In every lesson, you hear a business level conversation, and master must know phrases, vocabulary, and grammar rules. Our teachers slow down and translate every single word, and by the end, you will understand the entire dialogue. So just listen and repeat. You also get a bonus PDF ebook so you can read along. But if you want to learn English even faster with lessons by real teachers, visit EnglishClass101.com and sign up for your free lifetime account. Get full access to the EnglishClass101.com learning program that's hundreds of audio and video lessons, dozens of study tools, and exclusive apps. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 1 Introducing Yourself in an American Business Meeting. In this lesson, you'll learn how to break the ice and actively introduce yourself in a business meeting. The conversation takes place at a trade fair. It's between Linda and Paul Henderson. The speakers are strangers, therefore, they will speak formal English. Hello, I'm Linda Baker from Green and Blue. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Paul Henderson. I'm the sales manager at Rainbows. Nice to meet you. Here's my business card. Thank you. Here's mine. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. Hello, I'm Linda Baker from Green and Blue. Hi. Pleased to meet you. I'm Paul Henderson. I'm the sales manager at Rainbows. Nice to meet you. Here's my business card. Thank you. Here's mine. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... Hello. Used as a greeting. Hello. Hello. Next we have... To be pleased. To be happy with something. To be pleased. To be pleased. Then we have... Sales manager. The person in charge of a company's sales. Sales manager. Sales manager. Next up is... Business card. A small company card that has one's name and contact information on it. Business card. Business card. And lastly... From. Indicates point of origin. From. From. In this lesson, you'll learn how to break the ice and actively introduce yourself in a business meeting. When you introduce yourself in a business meeting, you give your name first and then add your company name as well. Usually, people give their full name and avoid any nicknames. Let's give some examples. My name is John Smith, and I work for the ABC Company. This sounds very polite and would be best in formal settings or when speaking to somebody who has no knowledge of you or your company. You can also use shorter sentences. Right. For example, I'm John Smith from the ABC Company, or even John Smith, ABC Company. The second one is more informal and quick and is best used in a situation where you meet many new people in a short period of time. You may be in a situation where you have more time to talk. Other things you can include are your job title, the location of the branch or office you work at, and the number of years you've worked there. For example, hi, I'm John Smith from the ABC Company. I've been an engineer at the LA branch for seven years. Sometimes you may be in a situation where deciding who introduces themselves first might be a little tricky. Right. However, if the meeting is in an office, then the person whose office it is should go first. If the meeting is in a neutral place and you know that the other person has a higher position in their company, then let them go first as well. Finally, if you don't know the other person's position, then whoever says hello or makes eye contact first should take the initiative. Okay, now let's see some words for professions that can come in handy when making introductions in a business setting. For example, an engineer is a person who designs things, such as systems and materials, using scientific knowledge. A salesperson is a person who sells goods to customers. An office worker is a person who works in an office, usually doing computer-based tasks. 
A mechanic is a person who fixes and maintains machines. An IT worker is a person who works with information technology, computer information systems, hardware, and software. Hello, I'm Linda Baker from Green and Blue. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Paul Henderson. I'm the sales manager at Rainbows. Nice to meet you. Here's my business card. Thank you. Here's mine. Practice with the review track. Introducing yourself in an American business meeting. Hello. Used as a greeting. Sales manager. The person in charge of a company's sales. From. Indicates point of origin. To be pleased. To be happy with something. Business card. A small company card that has one's name and contact information on it. Used as a greeting. Hello. The person in charge of a company's sales. Sales manager. A small company card that has one's name and contact information on it. Business card. The person in charge of a company's sales. Sales manager. A small company card. That has one's name and contact information on it. Business card. American Business English for Beginners, Season One, Lesson Two: Asking someone to repeat their name in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask someone to repeat their name if you didn't catch it. The conversation takes place at a trade fair. It's between Linda and Paul Henderson. The speakers are strangers; therefore, they will speak formal English. Excuse me, I didn't catch your name. Could you repeat it more slowly? Paul Henderson. Paul Henderson. Thank you. So you work at Rainbows? Yes, that's right. Did you say that you're the sales manager? Exactly. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. Excuse me, I didn't catch your name. Could you repeat it more slowly? Paul Henderson. Paul Henderson. Thank you. So you work at Rainbows? Yes, that's right. Did you say that you're the sales manager? Exactly. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is to catch, to reach and grasp, to catch, to catch. Next we have to repeat, to say again. To repeat, to repeat. Then we have slowly, with decreased speed. Slowly, slowly. Next, there's to work, to function, to work, to work. And lastly, exactly, perfectly, not more or less. Exactly, exactly. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask someone to repeat their name when you didn't catch it. After someone has introduced themselves, you might still not know their name. Right. 
It can be difficult to catch someone's name if it's a name you haven't heard before, or if they speak too quickly or too quietly, or if your surroundings are noisy. In these cases, it's fine to ask the other person to repeat their name. First, it's best to start with a polite apology, such as, I'm sorry, excuse me, or pardon me. Next, explain the problem. You can say, I didn't catch your name, or it's a little noisy, so I couldn't hear your name. If you want, you can ask them to repeat their name, but often just explaining that you didn't hear them is enough. So altogether, you can say, Excuse me, I didn't catch your name. Could you say it again, please? Or you can just say, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Sometimes the problem is that the other person is speaking too fast. In that case, you can ask them to speak slower. We can use the phrase, Could you repeat it slowly, please? with the phrases we just introduced. For example, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Could you repeat it slowly, please? Another option, and also a shortcut, is saying, Pardon me, or Excuse me. This will immediately tell the listener that you didn't hear them or that you couldn't understand what was said. Now, let's see the last topic of this lesson confirming and repeating information. Understanding clients is extremely important, and using verbal confirmation is a great way to make sure you and the client are understanding each other. It's almost like repeating what the other person has said, but there are a few differences. Right. When you can repeat or confirm what the client has said, you should restructure the phrase and put it in your own words. For example, if the client says, We're thinking of changing suppliers, you could reply with, Oh, so you might be looking for a new supplier? Another good reason to confirm information is that it makes it easier to remember. Right. Some people say that when you meet a new person, you should repeat their name three times in your first conversation to help you remember their name. Give it a try, but make it sound natural. That might be difficult. Since native English speakers rarely call each other by name. Excuse me, I didn't catch your name. Could you repeat it more slowly? Paul Henderson. Paul Henderson. Thank you. So you work at Rainbows? Yes, that's right. Did you say that you're the sales manager? Exactly. Practice with the review track. Asking someone to repeat their name in English. Exactly. Perfectly, not more or less. To work. To function. To catch. To reach or grasp. Slowly. With decreased speed. To repeat. To say again. To reach or grasp. To catch. To say again. To repeat. To reach or grasp. To catch. To function. To work. With decreased speed. Slowly. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 3 Introducing Your Boss to a Client in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to introduce your boss. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Linda, Paul Henderson, and Catherine Smith. The speakers are strangers, therefore they will speak formal English. Mr. Henderson, this is Green and Blue's Vice President, Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith, nice to meet you. I'm Paul Anderson, Sales Manager at Rainbows. I believe we've spoken on the phone a couple of times. Oh yes, nice to meet you. Let me introduce you to our company's CEO. He should be in his office. 
Could you please have a seat? And I'll see if he finished his morning meeting. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. Mr. Henderson. This is Green and Blue's Vice President, Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith, nice to meet you. I'm Paul Henderson, sales manager at Rainbows. I believe we've spoken on the phone a couple of times. Oh, yes. Nice to meet you. Let me introduce you to our company's CEO. He should be in his office. Could you please have a seat? And I'll see if he finished his morning meeting. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is Vice President. The second in command in a company or country, next to the president. Vice President. Vice President. Next we have To let. To allow. To let. To let. Next there's To believe. To accept something as true. To believe. To believe. Then there's Couple of times. Twice. Couple of times. Couple of times. Next up is CEO. Acronym for Chief Executive Officer, the highest ranking executive in a company. C E O. CEO. And lastly, to have a seat. To sit down. To have a seat. To have a seat. In this lesson, you'll learn how to introduce your boss. When you introduce your boss or supervisor in English, be sure to indicate their position. That will allow your business partner to understand that they're being introduced to someone who they can refer to when making important requests. Now let's see how to do that in a clear way. Here are two examples from the dialogue. We heard two sentences. First was, Mr. Henderson. This is Green and Blue's Vice President, Mrs. Smith. The second was, let me introduce you to our company's CEO. As you may already know, we use the phrase, this is, as a formula when introducing people to each other. Remember also that in English-speaking countries, the use of gestures is very important. In America, when we introduce someone saying, this is, often we will gesture toward the person we are introducing as we say the person's name. Usually, we perform this gesture with the palm of the hand facing up and with all fingers touching each other. Okay, following up, after introducing someone, you should state the position and the name of the person you are introducing. What are some of the most common roles in an American company? First, there's the CEO. As we already said, CEO stands for Chief Executive Officer. The CEO is the most senior corporate employee at an organization. There can also be the president, which is the leader of a company or organization. The second in charge, behind the president, is usually called vice president. Following that, we could have the head of marketing, which is the employee in charge of the department responsible for creating, engaging, and maintaining customers. Also, the head of accounting, or the employee in charge of the department responsible for the company's finances. The head of sales is the employee in charge of the department responsible for selling the company's products. The head of HR is the employee in charge of the department responsible for employee issues. We could also be introduced to a secretary or personal assistant, an employee who deals with admin duties such as handling visitors, organizing meetings, or writing letters. Most job titles in English are not gender specific, so you can use them for men and women. Probably the main exception is chairman, a title used for a person who is the leader of an organized group, such as the board of directors. Over time, chairman has been falling out of favor, and instead you might hear chairperson or simply chair. Let's wrap up this lesson with a couple of sample sentences. You can say, I'd like to introduce you to our president, Mr. Orton, or this is our receptionist, Mr. Stiles. Mr. Henderson, this is Green and Blue's Vice President, Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith, nice to meet you. I'm Paul Anderson, Sales Manager at Rainbows. I believe we've spoken on the phone a couple of times. Oh yes, nice to meet you. 
Let me introduce you to our company CEO. He should be in his office. Could you please have a seat? And I'll see if he finished his morning meeting. Practice with the review track. Introducing your boss to a client in English. To have a seat. To sit down. Vice President. The second in command in a company or country, next to be the president. Couple of times. Twice. To let. To allow. To believe. To accept something as true. Acronym for Chief Executive Officer, the highest ranking executive in a company. CEO. The second in command in a company or country, next to be the president. Vice President. Twice. Couple of times. To accept something as true. To believe. To allow. To let. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 4, Greeting Your Coworker in the Morning. In this lesson, you'll learn how to greet somebody at the office and ask them to do something. It's between Linda and Thomas Gray. The speakers are coworkers, therefore, they will speak informal English. Good morning. Good morning, Linda. The weather is wonderful today. Right. The temperature is perfect. It's a shame we have to work in the office. Indeed it is. Sadly, I'll need you to work on the report we talked about in the meeting. Do you think you can finish it by Friday morning? It may be difficult, but I'll try. Thank you, Thomas. Listen to the conversation one more time, slowly. Good morning. Good morning, Linda. The weather is wonderful today. Right. The temperature is perfect. It's a shame we have to work in the office. Indeed, it is. Sadly, I'll need you to work on the report we talked about in the meeting. Do you think you can finish it by Friday morning? It may be difficult, but I'll try. Thank you, Thomas. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... Wonderful. Extremely good. Amazing. Wonderful. Wonderful. Next we have perfect, flawless, without error. Perfect, perfect. Next up is shame, a pity. Shame, shame. Next there's indeed, really, correct. Indeed, indeed. Next we have sadly, unfortunate. Sadly, sadly. And lastly, difficult. Something that is hard to do, the opposite of easy. Difficult, difficult. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to greet somebody at the office and ask them to do something. 
Let's start by quickly reviewing the main greetings. As we already mentioned in another lesson, we can say hello at any time during the day. In the morning, you would naturally say good morning. Any time past noon, we say good afternoon. Finally, from around 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., the greetings change to good evening. We don't use good night as a greeting, even during the night, as this is typically a way to say goodbye. Although we can say hello all day, we usually don't use it when dealing with clients and customers. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening are better greetings for clients and customers as they sound more formal. Also, when you enter the office or workplace at the start of the morning, the usual greeting is good morning. Coworkers that have a friendly relationship will probably just say morning to each other. Okay, now let's see how to ask your coworker to do something. There are many ways to ask a coworker of a similar position to do something. The appropriate way to ask depends on your relationship to them and how major the task is. For small, easy tasks that you know your coworker will be happy to do, you can ask in a more direct manner using can you? For example, can you photocopy this for me? Or can you get the phone? To make these phrases a little more polite, you can use could you and please. For example, could you photocopy this for me, please? Or, could you get the phone, please? If the task is bigger, you're asking someone you don't know very well, a superior or someone who may be too busy to help, you should be more polite and less direct. Before saying what you want them to do, you should use an opening question, such as, are you busy? Or, could you help me? If they say yes or ask why, then you can explain what you want them to do using the same patterns as before. To ask for favors, it's best to use please. For example, could you get me the sales figures for the last quarter, please? Or, could you finish this by Friday, please? Finally, if your coworker agrees to help, remember to say, thanks for your help. If you're a senior member of staff asking a more junior member of staff to do something, then you can be more direct. It's more telling your coworker what to do than asking. Common sentence patterns for these kind of requests are, I need you to, or please do. For example, you can say, I need you to get me the sales figures for last quarter, or I need you to finish this by Friday. Good morning. Good morning, Linda. The weather is wonderful today. Right. The temperature is perfect. It's a shame we have to work in the office. Indeed it is. Sadly, I'll need you to work on the report we talked about in the meeting. Do you think you can finish it by Friday morning? It may be difficult, but I'll try. Thank you, Thomas. Practice with the review track. Greeting your coworker in the morning. Shame. A pity. Wonderful. Extremely good. Amazing. Sadly. Unfortunate. Indeed. Really correct. Difficult. Hard to do, not easy. Flawless, without error. Perfect. Unfortunate. Sadly. A pity. Shame. Extremely good. Amazing. Wonderful. Unfortunate. Sadly. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 5, Expressing Your Opinion in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to express your opinion in a business meeting. 
The conversation takes place in a meeting room. It's between Linda and Thomas Gray. The speakers are coworkers. Therefore, they will speak formal English. Our sales figures are down this month. Does anyone have any ideas for how we can increase them? It seems to me that we lost sales because our competitor had a sale. You may be right. In my opinion, we should have a sale this month, and I think our sales will increase again. Good idea. Let's try that this month. Listen to the conversation one more time, more slowly. Our sales figures are down this month. Does anyone have any ideas for how we can increase them? It seems to me that we lost sales because our competitor had a sale. You may be right. In my opinion. We should have a sale this month, and I think our sales will increase again. Good idea. Let's try that this month. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is sales. In the plural form, the activity or business of selling products. Sales. Sales. Next, we have figures, numbers, especially relating to amounts. Figures, figures. Next up is down, decrease, low. Down, down. Next, there's month. Each of the twelve named periods into which a year is divided. Month, month. Next, we have to increase, to go up in number or value. To increase, to increase. Next, there's competitor, opposition, rival, competitor, competitor. And lastly, sale, temporary reduction in price. Sale, sale. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to express your opinion in a business meeting. Giving an opinion can be very important in business, and it will help improve your English skills. We can give both positive and negative opinions. What is the easiest way to give our opinions? By using the phrase "I think." It shows that what we're saying is our opinion and not a fact. Can you give us some sentence examples, please? Sure. I think that's a good idea. I think the new product will be a success. You can also make the sentence negative. Yes. Just add "don't." I don't think. Again, some examples, please. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think the new product will be a success. There are also patterns we can use other than "I think." Yes, we can also use "It seems to me" and "In my opinion." It seems to me can be used to introduce an opinion that we know others might not agree with. "In my opinion" is a good, strong phrase to introduce your opinion. Time for some examples. It seems to me that he's always late. In my opinion, that's a bad idea. If someone else gives their opinion first and you think it's good, then you can agree with it. Here are some phrases you can use to agree. Yes, I agree. Yes, I think so too. That's a good idea. I think that Mr. Campbell is correct. Sometimes, though, other people have opinions that you don't agree with. I think that happens all of the time. Disagreeing with someone can be difficult, but remember to stay polite. It's good to acknowledge their opinion first with a phrase like "You have a point, but." The but shows that we're going to disagree with them, even if it sounds like we agree. An example of that is, "What you're saying is right, but." As soon as the other person hears that but, they know you're going to disagree. Our sales figures are down this month. Does anyone have any ideas for how we can increase them? It seems to me that we lost sales because our competitor had a sale. You may be right. In my opinion, we should have a sale this month, and I think our sales will increase again. Good idea. Let's try that this month. 
Practice with the review track. Expressing your opinion in English. Sales. The plural form of the activity or business of selling products. Down. Decrease. Low. Figures. Numbers, especially relating to amounts. Month. Each of the twelve named periods into which a year is divided. Competitor. Opposition, rival. Temporary reduction in price. Sales. To go up in number or value. To increase. Decrease low. Down. Each of the twelve named periods into which a year is divided. Month. The plural form of the activity or business of selling products. Sales. American Business English for Beginners, Season One, Lesson Six. Going out to meet clients in the United States. In this lesson, you'll learn how to offer to help your coworker. The conversation takes place at the office. It's between Linda and Thomas Gray. The speakers are coworkers, therefore they will speak informal English. I have an appointment at three o'clock at our clients. I see. If you have something urgent to do at the office, let me know. No, I'm just waiting for some new samples. Okay, I'll check with the delivery company for you. That would be great. Thank you. Any time, and good luck. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. I have an appointment at three o'clock at our clients. I see. If you have something urgent to do at the office, let me know. No, I'm just waiting for some new samples. Okay, I'll check with the delivery company for you. That would be great. Thank you. Any time, and good luck. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is appointment, a booking or reservation. Appointment, appointment. Next we have urgent, of pressing need. Urgent, urgent. Next there's sample, an example of a product, usually given for free. Sample, sample. Next there's delivery. Act of taking something to a person or place. Delivery. Delivery. Next, we have. Any time. At whatever time. Any time. Any time. And lastly. Good luck. A phrase used to wish someone well. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, now on to the lesson focus. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to offer to help your coworker. There may be times when you see your coworkers in the office needing help. It's nice if you can help them. Yes, it is. Let's go through some phrases to help you when you offer help. Do you need any help? Do you want any help? These are quite general questions. You can also ask more directly. Can I help you? Shall I help you? You can change the pronouns in these sentences to talk about other people too. Yes, you can change "Can I help you?" into 
Can you help Mr. Baker? This is asking someone else to help. Sometimes the task is small and obvious, so you don't really need to ask if they want help. Even if you don't ask, though, you should still tell them what you're doing in case they don't want you to do it. You can use the pattern, I'm going to, for you. Or, I will, for you. For example, I'll call the bank for you. If someone offers help to you, you can either accept their help or decline it. First, let's look at accepting help, and then tell them what you want them to do. I really appreciate it. Can you copy these notes? And say, thank you, one more time after they've finished. Next, let's look at how to decline. Maybe you don't need help, but even if this is the case, you should say, thank you. And then give a reason why you don't want their help. It doesn't have to be an in depth explanation. For example, thank you, but I'm fine. Can you give us another example? Thank you, but I can handle it. Thank you. I have an appointment at 3 o'clock at our clients. I see. If you have something urgent to do at the office, let me know. No, I'm just waiting for some new samples. Okay. I'll check with the delivery company for you. That would be great. Thank you. Anytime, and good luck. Practice with the review track. Going out to meet clients in the United States. Sample An example of a product usually given for free. Urgent Of pressing need. Good luck. A phrase used to wish someone well. Delivery Act of taking something to a person or place. Any time. At whatever time. A booking or reservation. Appointment. Act of taking something to a person or place. Delivery. Of pressing need. Urgent. A booking or reservation. Appointment. Act of taking something to a person or place. Delivery. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 7, Planning an English Business Meeting. In this lesson, you'll learn how to set up a meeting. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Linda and John Sullivan. The speakers are coworkers, therefore they will speak informal English. Mrs. Smith wants to check the PR team's ongoing projects. Can we set up a meeting by Friday? Sure. Does the team have any events that cannot be extended? Not this week. Do you need time to get ready for the meeting? Yes, at least half a day. Okay, so what about the day after tomorrow at 10 a.m.? That sounds good. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. Mrs. Smith wants to check the PR team's ongoing projects. Can we set up a meeting by Friday? Sure. Does the team have any events that cannot be extended? Not this week. Do you need time to get ready for the meeting? Yes, at least half a day. Okay, so what about 
the day after tomorrow at 10 a.m. That sounds good. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is PR. Public relations, the image of a company. PR. PR. Next we have ongoing. Continuing, not yet ended. Ongoing. Ongoing. Next there's to set up. To prepare, to arrange. To set up. To set up. Next up is to be extended. To be lengthened. To be extended. To be extended. Next we have to get ready for. To prepare for. To get ready for. To get ready for. Then there's at least the minimum amount. At least. At least. And lastly, to sound. Used to talk about your opinion or impression. To sound. To sound. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to set up a meeting. Let's start at the beginning of setting up a meeting. If we're going to have a meeting, we need a space to hold it. Yes, if it's an informal meeting, this isn't so important. But for formal meetings, you need a room. Let's hear some sentence patterns that we can use to ask about rooms. You can say, "Is the meeting room free?" or "Is the meeting room available?" And then say the date or time that you want to use it. Remember, when talking about days, we use the preposition on, on Monday. For times, we use a different preposition. Yes, we use at, at three o'clock. Let's hear all of that together in a sentence. Is the meeting room free on Tuesday at four p.m.? Now we have a room. We need to ask people if they can attend. We can use the same sentence patterns, only change meeting room to you or a name. We also need to change the be verb from is to are if you are using you. Right. Are you free on Wednesday afternoon? Sometimes you don't have a set time, or the time you decided on doesn't work. So you have to ask about time. You can ask your coworkers with phrases like these. When are you available? What time is good for you? If the time they give you isn't good for you, you can say, "I'm busy then," or "I'll be out of the office." If the time is good, then you can say something simple. Yeah, just a "That's fine," or "That works for me too." It might take a bit of talking to find a time and day that works for everyone. You can keep using the same sentence patterns, though, until you find something that works. Yes, you can. Mrs. Smith wants to check the PR team's ongoing projects. Can we set up a meeting by Friday? Sure. Does the team have any events that cannot be extended? Not this week. Do you need time to get ready for the meeting? Yes, at least half a day. Okay. So what about the day after tomorrow at 10 a.m.? That sounds good. Practice with the review track. Planning an English business meeting. To sound. Used to talk about your opinion or impression. Ongoing. Continuing, not yet ended. To be extended. To be lengthened. To set up. To prepare. To arrange. PR. Public relations. The image of a company. To prepare for. To get ready for. The minimum amount. At least. To prepare. To arrange. 
to set up. The minimum amount. At least. Continuing, not yet ended. Ongoing. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 8. Leaving your office at the end of the day. In this lesson, you'll learn how to use expressions for going home. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Linda and Thomas Gray. The speakers are co-workers. Therefore, they will speak informal English. That's it. I'm done for today. Do you still have much work to do? Not much. Maybe about half an hour. Do you need any help? No, thank you. It's a one-man job. Okay, then. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Enjoy the movie. Listen to the conversation one more time, slowly. That's it. I'm done for today. Do you still have much work to do? Not much. Maybe about half an hour. Do you need any help? No, thank you. It's a one-man job. Okay. Then I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Enjoy the movie. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... Done. Finished. Done. Done. Next we have... Today. The current day. Today. Today. Next up is... Still. Up to and including the present time. Still. Still. Next we have... About. Concerning a topic. About. About. Next there's... To help. To provide support or aid. To help. To help. Next we have... Myself. The speaker themselves. Myself. Myself. Next there's... Work. A task or action usually completed for pay. Work. Work. And lastly... Job. A task or action usually completed for pay. Job. Job. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to use expressions for going home. If you leave work first, it can mean one of two things. It might be that you've worked a full day and it's time to go home. Someone has to be the first to leave, right? Of course. The other meaning is that you might be leaving early before completing a full day of work. The things that you will say in these two circumstances are different, so let's look at them in turn. First, leaving early after completing a full day. In this case, a simple goodbye will do. Yeah, just something like, I'm leaving now, see you tomorrow. Or, I'm done for the day, have a good weekend. If you're leaving early, however, you may be leaving while you still have work left, or you may be giving your coworkers extra work. So first, you should say that you are leaving. I'm sorry, but I need to leave now. Then, follow it with because and a reason. The reason doesn't have to be specific or in-depth, but a little explanation is polite. Let's hear some examples of what you can say. I'm sorry, but I need to leave now because I have to take care of something personal. That's a very general explanation. Excuse me, I'm leaving now because I have a doctor's appointment. That one is a little more specific. Now, it might be that you're going to leave because it's the end of the day and you're finished, but your coworkers aren't finished. If you have the time to spare, it's nice to ask them if they need help before you leave. If your coworker knows you're leaving, they might not ask you for your help unless it's something small, but it's good to ask. John, let's hear some examples of how to offer help. Before I leave, is there anything I can do to help you? And another example? I'm finished for the day. Do you need help with anything? And one more, slightly less formal one. Are you okay or should I stay and help? It's good to ask them if they need help as they'll be more willing to help you if you need it. That's it. I'm done for today. Do you still have much work to do? Not much. Maybe about half an hour. Do you need any help? No, thank you. It's a one-man job. 
Okay then, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Enjoy the movie. Practice with the review track. Leaving your office at the end of the day. Myself. The speaker themselves. To help. To provide support or aid. Done. Finished. Today. The current day. To work. A task or action usually completed for pay. Up to and including the present time. Still. Concerning a topic. About. A task or action usually completed for pay. Job. Concerning a topic. About. Up to and including the present time. Still. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 9 The Last Day Before a Holiday in an American Office. In this lesson, you'll learn how to wish your coworker a great vacation. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Linda and Thomas Gray. The speakers are co-workers, therefore they will speak informal English. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Happy Easter to you too. I actually don't celebrate it. I'm Muslim. Oh right. In that case, enjoy the days off. Will do. You have a nice holiday too. Listen to the conversation one more time, slowly. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Happy Easter to you, too. I actually don't celebrate it. I'm Muslim. Oh, right. In that case, enjoy the days off. Will do. You have a nice holiday, too. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... Easter. A holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter. Easter. Next we have... Actually. In truth, in reality. Actually. Actually. Next, there's... To celebrate. To observe with festivities or ceremonies. To celebrate. To celebrate. Next up is... Muslim. A person who follows Islam. Muslim. Muslim. Then we have... Case. Circumstance. Situation. Case. Case. And lastly... Day off. A day without work or school. Day off. Day off. In this lesson, you'll learn how to wish your coworker a great vacation. As we already said, America has 10 federal holidays. The vast majority of businesses close for these days, and employees may choose to spend their holiday doing something fun with their family or friends. Let's see how to wish someone a good vacation. You can wish your coworker a good vacation by saying, Have a good followed by the name of the holiday. You can also say, I hope you have a good, and the name of the holiday. Both of these phrases use the word have and good, and they are both wishing the other person a good day off. Let's give some sample sentences. Sure, for example, you can say, have a good Columbus Day, or simply, I hope you have a good holiday.
you can sometimes say happy followed by the name of the holiday. This doesn't just wish your coworker a good holiday, but also celebrates that the holiday exists and is happening at that time. Right. For example, you've probably heard Happy New Year and Happy Birthday before. There is one exception. For Christmas, we usually say Merry Christmas. Okay, now let's talk about vacations. As well as public holidays, there are also vacation days. These are days that an employee can take whenever they wish. These types of holidays are usually reserved for vacations when people and their family or friends travel. If you know where your coworker is going, you can say, "I hope you have a good time in." Followed by the name of the destination. You can also say "enjoy yourself in" and the name of the destination. Notice that each time the preposition "in" goes before the destination to show where the coworker is going. Here are some examples. I hope you have a good time in New York, or enjoy yourself in Spain. You can also follow this with a light comment about where they are going. You can jokingly ask for a souvenir or recommend a place to visit. You can say, "Don't forget my souvenir." Or I recommend going to the Eiffel Tower at night. This kind of small talk creates a good atmosphere in the office, and as long as it is kept light and short, it isn't rude or intrusive. Okay, now let's see how to politely correct information. There are a few ways you can do this. If you can do it smoothly, repeating the information correctly is a good way to do it. This way, you correct the information without drawing attention to the error, especially for minor misunderstandings. What about bigger or complex errors? A polite way to correct bigger mistakes is to act like you're not sure yourself. Instead of saying "This is the correct information," say "I'm not sure, but I think this is the correct information." Right. Usually, if you introduce doubt like this, your coworker will double-check the information and find the correct information themselves. Here is a sample sentence: "I'm not sure, but I thought the meeting was on Tuesday." It's best to avoid directly telling someone that they're wrong. But sometimes you may need to. Try not to be confrontational, and if possible, correct the information in private, as it can be embarrassing to be corrected in front of other people. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Happy Easter to you too. I actually don't celebrate it. I'm Muslim. Oh right. In that case, enjoy the days off. Will do. You have a nice holiday too. Practice with the review track. The last day before a holiday in an American office. To celebrate. To observe with festivities or ceremonies. Muslim. A person who follows Islam. Actually, in truth, in reality, Easter, a holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Day off. A day without work or school. Circumstance situation. Case. A holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter. In truth, in reality. Actually. A day without work or school. Day off. A person who follows Islam. Muslim. American Business English for Beginners, Season One, Lesson Ten: Asking for Simple Business Information in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for simple information. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Linda and John Sullivan. The speakers are coworkers. Therefore, they will speak informal English.
Do you know Mr. Lee's telephone number? Yes, his office number is 555-1234. Yes, I tried that earlier, but he wasn't in. Do you happen to know his cell phone number? Yes, it's 555-5678. I'll try there. Thank you very much. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. Do you know Mr. Lee's telephone number? Yes, his office number is 555-1234. Yes, I tried that earlier, but he wasn't in. Do you happen to know his cell phone number? Yes, it's 555-5678. I'll try there. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... To know. To be aware of something. To know. To know. Next we have... Telephone. A machine that allows you to speak to other people in a different place. Telephone. Telephone. Next up is... Number. Symbol representing a quantity. Number. Number. Next there's... Office. A place where people work, usually on computers. Office. Office. Next we have... To happen. To take place. To occur. To happen. To happen. And lastly, cell phone. A portable telephone. Cell phone. Cell phone. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for simple information. An easy way to ask for simple information is with WH question words. Let's review them. They are what, where, when, why, who, and how. Using these six words, we can make many different questions. Let's give a sample sentence for each one, starting with what. You can say, what time does the meeting start? A question with where could be, where is the meeting? An example with when is, when will the meeting start? Using why, you could ask, why were you late this morning? With who, you can ask about people. For example, who will be at the meeting? How is usually to ask about method, condition, or quality. For example, how does the fax machine work? To make these questions softer and more polite, you can begin the sentence by saying, do you know? For example, do you know when the meeting will start? Or, do you know who will be at the meeting? Now, let's see how to answer simple questions and give information. Most of the simple questions we just saw can be answered by using a sentence made by a pronoun followed by a to-be verb and the answer. Listeners, in the lesson notes, you can find a table complete with the personal pronouns and the verb to be. Let's practice. For example, what can you answer to, when is the meeting? You could say, it's at 2 p.m. If someone asks, where is your office, you could answer, it's on the third floor. Remember that for questions about the future, such as, when will the meeting start? And, who will be at the meeting? We need to use the modal verb, will. This follows the pronoun and goes before the verb. For example, it will start at 2 p.m. Or, Mr. Baker will be at the meeting. Do you know Mr. Lee's telephone number? Yes, his office number is 555-1234. Yes, I tried that earlier, but he wasn't in. Do you happen to know his cell phone number? Yes, it's... 555-5678. Five, 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 I'll try there. Thank you very much. Practice with the review track. Asking for simple business information in English. Cell phone. A portable telephone. To happen. To take place. To occur. Telephone. 
a device that allows you to speak to other people in a different place. Number Symbol representing a quantity To know To be aware of something A place where people work, usually on computers. Office A device that allows you to speak to other people in a different place. Telephone Symbol representing a quantity Number a device that allows you to speak to other people in a different place. Telephone Symbol representing a quantity Number American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 11 Asking for information about American office procedures. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for basic office rules. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Mark Coles and a receptionist. The speakers are strangers. Therefore, they will speak formal English. Where should I send the invoice? Please send it to the accounting office. When will I get the bank transfer? I'm not sure, but the accounting staff can give you all the information. Thank you. I'll ask them about all the details. Listen to the conversation one more time, slowly. Where should I send the invoice? Please send it to the accounting office. When will I get the bank transfer? I'm not sure. But the accounting staff can give you all the information. Thank you. I'll ask them about all the details. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... Invoice. Bill. Document stating amount of money needed to pay for certain goods and services. Invoice. Invoice. Next we have Accounting The department responsible for calculating invoices and wages. Accounting Accounting Then we have Bank A business that offers financial services, such as loans and accounts. Bank Bank Next we have Transfer The act of moving something from one place to another. Transfer Transfer Next up is Staff. All the people employed by a particular organization. Staff. Staff. Next, there's... Information. Facts and knowledge of a situation or thing. Information. Information. And lastly... Details. The individual parts and features of something. The minor information. Details. Details. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for basic office rules. When you start working in a new office, you will be given training to help with your new job. And no matter how long or detailed the training is, it's unlikely that it will cover every question you have. To help make some questions, let's see some common nouns that you will find in the office. A very common one is printer or Xerox machine. This refers to the machine that prints documents using ink and paper. Usually on the first day, you are introduced to certain places, such as the cafeteria. The cafeteria is the area in a company or school that serves food. The break area is where you can eat or rest. There, we can usually find the water cooler, a machine that dispenses drinking water. Listeners, be sure to check out the lesson notes to see more words. In the last lesson, we learned about the WH question words, what, where, when, why, who, and how. We can use these question words to form questions about the office, too. Right. Other sentence patterns that will be of use include can I or may I, 
and is there or are there. Let's give some examples. For example, you may want to ask, How do I use the Xerox machine? Or, When is the cafeteria open? Also, Is there a smoking area? Or, Can I use the refrigerator? Okay, now let's see how to answer these questions. That basically depends on how the question is phrased. Some questions just need simple yes or no answers, but some need longer answers. Which are the questions we can answer with yes or no? The questions beginning with can I or is there? Some other questions might be able to be answered just with it is, she is, he is. Right. These questions, for example, include who or when. Questions that begin with why and how need longer answers. You can actually also use just let me show you if someone asks you how to do something. So if someone asks you, How do I use the Xerox machine? What can you say? You can simply say, Let me show you. You can use the same answer also if someone asks you where something is. Where should I send the invoice? Please send it to the accounting office. When will I get the bank transfer? I'm not sure, but the accounting staff can give you all the information. Thank you. I'll ask them about all the details. Practice with the review track. Asking for information about American office procedures. Staff. All the people employed by a particular organization. Details. The individual parts and features of something, the minor information. Accounting. The department responsible for calculating invoices and wages. Transfer. The act of moving something from one place to another. Information. Facts and knowledge of a situation or thing. Bill. Document stating amount needed to pay for certain goods and services. Invoice. A business that offers financial services, such as loans and accounts. Bank. The act of moving something from one place to another. Transfer. All the people employed by a particular organization. Staff. A business that offers financial services, such as loans and accounts. Bank. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 12. Asking for help in a difficult American business situation. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for help in a difficult situation. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Thomas Gray and Linda. The speakers are co-workers, therefore they will speak informal English. I'm sorry to bother you, but I need your help with something. Sure. What is it? The printer is stuck. Do you know how it works? Let me see. It seems that you just need to add new paper. Oh, that was easy. Sorry for bothering you. I can handle that. No problem. I'm glad to help. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. I'm sorry to bother you, but I need your help with something. Sure. What is it? The printer is stuck. Do you know how it works? Let me see. It seems that you 
just need to add new paper. Oh, that was easy. Sorry for bothering you. I can handle that. No problem. I'm glad to help. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is sorry. Word for apology. Sorry. Sorry. Next we have to bother. To annoy, to interrupt. To bother. To bother. Next there's printer. A device that transfers digital images or text onto paper using ink. Printer. Printer. Next up is stuck. Unable to move. Stuck. Stuck. Next we have to add. To increase. To add. To add. Next there's paper. Thin material processed from trees and usually employed as a support for writing or printing. Paper. Paper. And lastly, to handle. To deal with. To handle, to handle. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for help in a difficult situation. Let's see first how to politely get someone's attention. Sometimes getting someone's attention may be difficult if they are busy or having a conversation with someone else. In the event of an urgent situation, such as a fire or injury, then you don't need to worry about being polite. And can just quickly shout out a warning or request help. For example, if you see a fire, you can just shout "fire." If someone is ill or injured and needs the hospital, be sure to shout "call an ambulance." Listeners, you can find more emergency phrases in the lesson notes. Be sure to check them out. What if it's not an urgent situation? In that case, you just need to be polite. First, you should apologize by saying something like "excuse me, but" or "I'm sorry to interrupt, but." Be sure to follow the apology phrase with "but" and explain briefly why you are interrupting. You don't need to go into details. You can just say, "I need to talk to you," or "There's a problem." How does it sound altogether? Excuse me, but I need to talk to you. Or I'm sorry, but there's a problem. Okay, let's see now how to actually ask for help. It's simple. You can say, "Can you help me with this?" and the noun of the thing that is troubling you. For example. Can you help me with this report? The first word of the formula is can. So you're asking your coworker if they are able to help, and not just telling them to help. You can make this more polite by using could instead of can. Could you help me with this report? If you want to use a verb after help me with, be sure to put it in its ing form. Let's give an example. Can you help me with preparing this presentation? You can also drop with. In that case, you don't need the ing form. It sounds like. Can you help me prepare this presentation? Let's wrap up with another example. Sure. You can say either. Can you help me with moving this desk? Or can you help me move this desk? I'm sorry to bother you, but I need your help with something. Sure. What is it? The printer is stuck. Do you know how it works? Let me see. It seems that you just need to add new paper. Oh, that was easy. Sorry for bothering you. I can handle that. No problem. I'm glad to help. Practice with the review track. Asking for help in a difficult American business situation. To add. To increase. To bother. To annoy. To interrupt. Printer. A device that transfers digital images or text onto paper using ink. Stuck. Unable to move. To handle. To deal with.
word for an apology. Sorry. Thin material processed from trees and usually employed as support for writing or printing. Paper. A device that transfers digital images or text onto paper using ink. Printer. To increase. To add. To annoy, to interrupt. To bother. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 13. How to Ask for a Specific Person on the Phone in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask to speak with somebody on the phone. The conversation takes place over the phone. It's between a receptionist and Linda. The speakers are strangers. Therefore, they will speak formal English. Delta Corporation, how can I help you? Good morning. My name is Linda Baker. I work for Green and Blue. Can I speak to Mr. Smith? Yes. One moment, please. Can you please repeat your name? Linda Baker from Green and Blue. I only have a limited amount of time available to speak. Please hold for a moment. I'll transfer you to Mr. Smith. Listen to the conversation one time slowly. Delta Corporation, how can I help you? Good morning. My name is Linda Baker. I work for Green and Blue. Can I speak to Mr. Smith? Yes. One moment, please. Can you please repeat your name? Linda Baker from Green and Blue. I only have a limited amount of time available to speak. Please hold for a moment. I'll transfer you to Mr. Smith. <laughs> Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is limited. Having restrictions. Limited. Limited. Next we have to speak. To have a conversation. To speak. To speak. Next we have one moment. A short period of time, usually only a few seconds. One moment. One moment. Next we have to repeat. To do or to say something again. To repeat. To repeat. Next we have. To hold. To keep or to detain. To hold. To hold. And lastly. Line. A telephone connection. Line. Line. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask to speak with somebody on the phone. First of all, in a business setting, if you are calling someone, you should always introduce yourself at the beginning of the call. Even if the other person may have your phone number and know it's you already from your caller ID? Yes, it's still polite to introduce yourself. What do you say when introducing yourself over the phone? Start with a simple greeting such as hello or good morning. There are a few ways that you can say your name. What do you say if you want to sound formal? Hello, my name is John Baker. More casual introductions are, hello, it's John Baker, or hello, John Baker here. So, in case you're calling for the first time and want to add your company name, what would you say? In such a case, be sure to use the preposition from or at. For example, you can say, hello, my name is John Baker from the ABC company, or hello, it's John Baker at the ABC company. The preposition at sounds more casual, so it's best to use from. Another point to remember is that if company is part of the company's name, we would say the ABC company. If it's just ABC, then we don't need the article. In the second case, what would the whole sentence sound like? Hello, my name is John Baker from ABC. Okay, now let's see how to ask to speak with someone else, unless you already know that the person you want to speak to is the person with whom you're already speaking. 
If you're not sure, or you know that the person you're speaking with isn't the person that you need to speak with, then you should say who you want to speak to. There are many ways to do this. Let's hear a formal example and a less formal one. To sound polite, you can say, May I speak to Alice Smith, please? Or a more casual sentence would be, Is Alice Smith available? After asking to speak to someone, they might need a few moments to finish up a task or maybe in a different office. In cases like this, you will be asked to wait. Right. You may hear sentences like, Please hold while I transfer you, or Is it okay if I put you on hold while I check? In all of these cases, just say thank you and wait to be connected. Delta Corporation, how can I help you? Good morning. My name is Linda Baker. I work for Green and Blue. Can I speak to Mr. Smith? Yes. One moment, please. Can you please repeat your name? Linda Baker from Green and Blue. I only have a limited amount of time available to speak. Please hold for a moment. I'll transfer you to Mr. Smith. Practice with the review track. How to ask for a specific person on the phone in English. One moment. A short period of time, usually only a few seconds. To hold. To keep or to detain. Limited. Having restrictions. Line. A telephone connection. To speak. To have a conversation. To do or to say something again. To repeat. A short period of time, usually only a few seconds. One moment. A telephone connection. Line. Having restrictions. Limited. To have a conversation. To speak. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 14. Apologizing when you forget something in the United States. In this lesson, you'll learn how to admit that you forgot something. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Linda and her coworker, Thomas Gray. And because the speakers are coworkers, they will speak formal English. Did you bring the data? The data? Yes, the data for the advertisement campaign. Oh, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot to print it out. That's a problem. Can we print it out now? Sure, I'll get it ready in half an hour. Great, that's perfect. Once again, I'm really sorry for this. Listen to the conversation one time slowly. Did you bring the data? The data? Yes, the data for the advertisement campaign. Oh. I'm so sorry. I completely forgot to print it out. That's a problem. Can we print it out now? Sure. I'll get it ready in half an hour. Great. That's perfect. Once again, I'm really sorry for this. <laughs> Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... To bring. To take with. To bring. To bring. Next we have... Data. Facts and statistics used for information or research. Data. 
data. Next we have advertisement. A notice or piece of media to promote a product or service. Advertisement. Advertisement. Next we have campaign. A short-term promotion to increase awareness or sales. Campaign. Campaign. Next we have completely. Thoroughly, entirely. Completely. Completely. Next we have to print out. To produce documents from a computer onto paper. To print out. To print out. Next we have to get ready. To prepare, to produce. To get ready. To get ready. And lastly, once again. One more time. Once again. Once again. In this lesson, you'll learn how to admit that you forgot something. In the office, as well as during our regular day-to-day -day duties, we are often asked to do extra things by other people. Sometimes they ask us quickly. Other times they ask us when we are busy or when we're about to leave for the day, and it's easy to forget what has been said. Sometimes we're too busy to remember everything we need to do. Right. It's likely that at some point you will forget something. If this happens, you should tell the right person that you forgot. Is there a sentence pattern we can use? Yes, you can say "I forgot" plus the noun of what you forgot, or "I forgot to," followed by the verb. Let's give some examples. Sure. For example, I forgot the paperwork, or I forgot to call him. And if we need to explain a little more, we can include the word "that." For example, I forgot that I shouldn't call him before 10 a.m. Or I forgot that the deadline was yesterday. When you forget something, you should also make sure to apologize. To apologize, we can use phrases such as "I'm sorry" or "I apologize." You can also use adverbs such as "really," "very," and "so" to show how sorry you are. Let's give some sample sentences. I forgot the meeting. I'm sorry. And I forgot that the deadline was yesterday. I'm really sorry. When you apologize, you should sound sincere. But don't overdo it if it's only a small mistake. That's because often people are more concerned about fixing the situation rather than listening to apologies. The last step is about what to say to someone who apologizes for forgetting something. The reaction changes depending on how serious the situation is. If they've forgotten something simple that doesn't cause any problems, you can react differently than you would to someone forgetting something major that can ruin a meeting. Let's see both cases. What would you say if the situation is not so bad? You can say it's fine. Don't worry about it. Or it's okay. It doesn't matter. If the situation is more serious, forgiving the person might also be tied to figuring out how to solve the problem. Right. In that case, you can just suggest the solution by saying, "Okay, well, can you quickly get the figures together?" Or, "Can you call him now?" It's very rare in English for people to actually say, "I forgive you" when somebody has done something wrong. Right. Instead, we usually act as if the error isn't that big of a deal and move on quickly. Did you bring the data? The data? Yes, the data for the advertisement campaign. Oh, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot to print it out. That's a problem. Can we print it out now? Sure, I'll get it ready in half an hour. Great, that's perfect. Once again, I'm really sorry for this. Practice with the review track. Apologizing when you forget something in the United States. To get ready. To prepare. To produce advertisement, a notice or piece of media to promote a product or service, to print out, to produce documents from a computer onto paper, completely, thoroughly. Entirely. To bring. To take with.
facts and statistics used for information or research. Data A short-term promotion to increase awareness or sales. Campaign One more time. Once again. Facts and statistics used for information or research. Data To produce documents from a computer onto paper. To print out. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 15, Interrupting and Suggesting Alternatives in English. Becky here. Hi, I'm John. In this lesson, you'll learn how to interrupt and suggest alternatives. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Catherine Smith and Thomas Gray. The speakers are boss and employee. Therefore, they will speak formal English. So the advertising campaign for the new language classes will start next month. Sorry, but can I just suggest that we start earlier? Why is that? Isn't it true that advertisements are seen by more people during vacation periods? That's true. Summer vacation is starting soon, so we should start the campaign then. Good idea. Listen to the conversation one time slowly. So, the advertising campaign for the new language classes will start next month. Sorry, but can I just suggest that we start earlier? Why is that? Isn't it true that advertisements are seen by more people during vacation periods? That's true. Summer vacation is starting soon, so we should start the campaign then. Good idea. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... Next. Immediately following something in a sequence. Next. Next. Next we have... To start. To begin. To start. To start. Next we have... To suggest. To recommend. To suggest. To suggest. Next we have... Earlier. Comparative form of early. Before another point of time. Earlier. Earlier. Next we have... Case. A situation. Case. Case. Next we have... Correct. Right. Without error. Correct. Correct. And last? Idea. A thought or suggestion. Idea. Idea. In this lesson, you'll learn how to interrupt and suggest alternatives. This is an important point to master if you want to get along with your coworkers. For example, if you're in a meeting or discussing a situation with several people, you may have things you want to say. This can be difficult sometimes if many people are talking or if you have something to say that is relevant to what is currently being discussed. Since you might need to stop other people from talking and because people usually don't like being interrupted, you have to make sure to do this in the correct and polite way. The most polite way is to actually say that you want to interrupt instead of just jumping in with what you want to say. You should also ask permission to interrupt instead of just saying, I'm going to interrupt. Let's give some useful examples. You could say, excuse me, can I just interrupt you for a moment? Or, can I jump in here? You can also give a reason why you want to interrupt. Often, you want to interrupt people because they are giving wrong information. That's right, but never interrupt by directly saying, you're wrong. It's better to ask for permission to interrupt and then say what you need to say. John, can you give us some examples? Sure, you could say, can I jump in here? The projected figures are actually 100 a month. Or, can I speak for a moment? It was the ABC company that sold that item. Next, let's look into how to persuade people. Persuading people to your way of thinking can be a difficult task, as different people are persuaded in different ways. 
In a business situation, the best thing to do is to back up your ideas with evidence, either hard figures or examples of things working in different companies. It's also a good idea to acknowledge the positives of other people's ideas and make it sound like you're building on those instead of just proposing something entirely new. Some keywords you can use are maybe and suggest. Here's a simple pattern that could come in handy. You can say, I suggest, and then explain your idea. For example, I suggest that we start tomorrow, or I suggest more research. Another good technique is to ask people to help you with your idea. Can you give us an example of this? You can simply ask, What do you think, Mr. Baker? Or be more detailed and say something like, You've always said October is a so month, haven't you, Miss Smith? So the advertising campaign for the new language classes will start next month. Sorry, but can I just suggest that we start earlier? Why is that? Isn't it true that advertisements are seen by more people during vacation periods? That's true. Summer vacation is starting soon, so we should start the campaign then. Good idea. Practice with the review track. Interrupting and suggesting alternatives in English. Case. A situation. Next. Immediately following something in a sequence. Correct. Right. Without error. Earlier. Comparative form of early. Before another point of time. Idea. A thought or suggestion. To begin. To start. To recommend. To suggest a situation, case, a thought or suggestion, idea, right without error, correct. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 16, Asking for Time Off Work in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for a day off. The following conversation takes place over the phone. It's between Catherine Smith and Linda. The speakers are boss and employee. Therefore, they will speak formal English. Mrs. Smith, sorry to call so early. Hello, Linda. What happened? I don't feel very good today, and I'd rather stay home. Sure, don't worry. Are you going to see a doctor? If it gets worse, I will. Okay, please call back this afternoon and tell me how you are doing. I will. Listen to the conversation one time slowly. Mrs. Smith Sorry to call so early. Hello, Linda. What happened? I don't feel very good today, and I'd rather stay home. Sure, don't worry. Are you going to see a doctor? If it gets worse, I will. Okay, please call back this afternoon and tell me how you are doing. I will. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... Early. The first part of a period of time. 
early. Early. Next we have. To feel. To experience an emotion. To feel. To feel. Next we have. Rather. Used to indicate preference. Rather. Rather. Next we have. To stay. To remain. To not leave. To stay. To stay. Next we have. To call back. To make a phone call to someone you have already called. To call back. To call back. And lastly. Worse. Comparative form of bad. Worse. Worse. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for a day off. As there is no minimum requirement for the number of paid leave days a company must give, taking a day off can differ from company to company. Some companies will be fine with employees taking days off, but with other companies, it may be more difficult. In any case, you should speak directly to your manager if you need to take a day off. Some companies may require a form to be submitted to HR, while others require you to speak to your manager. There are two main things you should tell them, the date and a reason. Let's review the date. In the U.S., dates are written and spoken in a month, day, year format. For example, May 27, 2017. If you don't need to specify the year, you can just say July 4th or October 11th. Also, remember to use ordinal numbers when talking about dates. You can find a complete list in the lesson notes if you need to review them. Let's now see how to state the reason for taking a day off. When providing the reason, most people will start by saying, I have or I need, especially for medical or childcare reasons. For example, I have a doctor's appointment or I need to go to a parent meeting at my child's school. If you are asking for vacations or recreational days, you should only use I want. For example, I want to go on vacation. Sometimes you need to ask for a day off on short notice. If you're calling on the day that you need to take off, you should call your manager as early as possible. In this case, it's better to be more direct and use phrases such as I need or I can't. For example, I can't come in today because I don't have any childcare. Let's see how you would ask for a day off if you're feeling sick. When talking about an illness, the key phrase is I have, followed by the name of the illness. For example, I have a headache or I have the flu. In the case of an illness, you have to keep your supervisor updated. However, it is not mandatory to do the same with your coworkers unless you want to. Mrs. Smith, sorry to call so early. Hello, Linda. What happened? I don't feel very good today, and I'd rather stay home. Sure, don't worry. Are you going to see a doctor? If it gets worse, I will. Okay, please call back this afternoon and tell me how you are doing. I will. Practice with the review track. Asking for time off work in English. To feel. To experience an emotion. Worse. Comparative form of bad. To call back. To make a phone call to someone you have already called. To stay. To remain. To not leave. Rather. Used to indicate preference. The first part of a period of time. Early. To make a phone call to someone you have already called. To call back. Comparative form of bad. Worse. Used to indicate preference. Rather. To remain, to not leave. 
to stay. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 17 Explaining an Absence from the Office in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to apologize for taking a day off. The following conversation takes place in an office. It's between Mark Coles and Linda. The speakers are a boss and an employee. Therefore, they will speak both formal and informal English. Hello, Linda. How are you? I heard that you didn't feel well yesterday. Apologies. I had a severe headache and I rested at home. That can happen. No need to apologize. I hope it's okay now. Let me know if I can help you. Thank you. Listen to the conversation one time slowly. Hello, Linda. How are you? I heard that you didn't feel well yesterday. Apologies. I had a severe headache and I rested at home. That can happen. No need to apologize. I hope it's okay now. Let me know if I can help you. Thank you. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first phrase is... To feel well. To feel fine. To not be sick or ill. To feel well. To feel well. Next we have... Apology. An admission of a mistake. Apology. Apology. Next we have... Severe. Intense. Extreme. Severe. Severe. Next we have... Headache. A pain of the head. Headache. Headache. Next we have... To rest. To take a break from doing something. To rest. To rest. And lastly... To apologize. To acknowledge an error or guilt and say sorry. To apologize. To apologize. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to apologize for taking a day off. You don't really need to apologize for taking a planned day off since you would have asked in advance and been given permission. However, if you take a day off on short notice, you should apologize when you ask for the day off and when you return to the office. First, let's see how to apologize when you ask for the day off. You can do this by saying, I'm sorry, but, followed by the reason. For example, you can say, I'm so sorry, but I have a migraine and won't be able to make it in today. You can add really, very, or so to show how sorry you are. For example, you could say, I'm really sorry, but I have no childcare for today. When you return to the office, you should apologize to your manager, especially if you asked on short notice. You can repeat the reason that forced you to miss work and even give some more information about it. For example, I'm so sorry, but I was ill all night and couldn't come to work. Here is another example. I'm really sorry about yesterday, but I called everyone I know and nobody was free to look after my children. It's also important to say that you've taken steps to make sure that the same thing won't happen again. Right. In the case of childcare, the proper response would be, I found a new nursery that can take my children. In the U.S., it's customary to apologize and give explanations to your coworkers, but you don't have to, especially if the issue is delicate or personal. Okay, now let's see how to accept these kind of apologies. If you're a manager, then how you deal with short notice days off depends on the circumstance. If it's a one-time occurrence, you will say something different than you would for a long-standing problem. In either circumstance, you should acknowledge that the employee called in and say that you hope the problem is resolved. For example, in the case of the child again, in the case of the child care, you could say, "Thanks for letting me know. Do you have a new babysitter?" In the case of not feeling well, you could say, "I'm glad you're feeling better now, but what do you do if you're just a coworker?" Then your acceptance will be more casual. You can just say, "Not a problem" or "No worries." Hello, Linda. How are you? I heard that you didn't feel well yesterday. 
Apologies. I had a severe headache and I rested at home. That can happen. No need to apologize. I hope it's okay now. Let me know if I can help you. Thank you. Practice with the review track. Explaining an absence from the office in English. Apology. An admission of a mistake. Headache. A pain of the head. To feel well. To feel fine. To not be sick or ill. To apologize. To acknowledge an error or guilt and say sorry. Severe. Intense extreme. To take a break from doing something. To rest. A pain of the head. Headache. An admission of a mistake. Apology. A pain of the head. Headache. An admission of a mistake. Apology. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 18 Apologies in an American Business Setting. In this lesson, you'll learn how to apologize to a client. The following conversation takes place over the phone. It's between Paul Henderson and Linda. The speakers are business partners. Therefore, they will speak formal English. Hello? Mr. Henderson, this is Linda Baker from Green and Blue. We have a meeting scheduled today. Unfortunately, I will arrive late because I'm stuck in traffic. I'm sorry. I hope this doesn't cause problems. Please don't worry. I don't have any other appointments today, so I'll wait for you. Thank you. I'll try to be there as soon as possible. Listen to the conversation one time slowly. Hello? Mr. Henderson. This is Linda Baker from Green and Blue. We have a meeting scheduled today. Unfortunately, I will arrive late because I'm stuck in traffic. I'm sorry. I hope this doesn't cause problems. Please don't worry. I don't have any other appointments today, so I'll wait for you. Thank you. I'll try to be there as soon as possible. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... To schedule. To make a plan. To do. To schedule. To schedule. Next we have... Unfortunately. Regrettably. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Next we have... To arrive. To get to your destination. To arrive. To arrive. Next we have... To be stuck. To be unable to move due to an obstacle. To be stuck. To be stuck. Next we have... Traffic. Vehicles driving on the road around the same area. Traffic. Traffic. Next we have... As soon as. Quickly. At the earliest time possible. As soon as. As soon as. And lastly... Possible. Able to be done. Possible. Possible.
In this lesson, you'll learn how to apologize to a client. In the business world, the relationship with your client is very important and something you should treasure. You should avoid making mistakes or offending them at all costs. However, sometimes things happen that you'll need to apologize for. The key phrase for apologizing to a client is, I'm sorry for, followed by what happened. The preposition for is very important, as it links what happened to your apology. When apologizing to a client, you should be honest and explain what happened, but you don't need to go into details. Right. The client expects to be dealing with a professional company, so don't tell them about staff shortage problems or other issues. You could just say, I'm sorry for not getting back to you, or I'm sorry for the delay. However, this doesn't sound very reassuring to the client, so you could add, it won't happen again to the end. Now the client knows that this mistake was a one-time occurrence and won't be repeated in the future. When apologizing to a client, you should also consider whether any further action is appropriate. For example, if you have delayed their order or got it wrong, should they receive a discount for the error? If that's the case, you could say, I'm sorry for the mistake, so to make it up to you, I'll give you a 5% discount on the order. Okay, now let's see how to accept an apology. If your business partner has done something wrong towards you or your company, you might hear some of the phrases we've just discussed. You need to react to them in a professional way, especially if you want to continue doing business with your client. You need to be formal. You could even use a phrase like, apology accepted. If you want to make sure that the mistake isn't repeated, you can say, please make sure that it doesn't happen again. It may be better to avoid saying that to a client and save it for a business partner who didn't behave well. Your tone of voice is also very important. Phrases like these can sound either harsh or playful depending on how they are said. Hello? Mr. Henderson, this is Linda Baker from Green and Blue. We have a meeting scheduled today. Unfortunately, I will arrive late because I'm stuck in traffic. I'm sorry, I hope this doesn't cause problems. Please don't worry. I don't have any other appointments today, so I'll wait for you. Thank you. I'll try to be there as soon as possible. Practice with the review track. Apologies in an American business setting. Possible. Able to be done. To be stuck. To be unable to move due to an obstacle. Unfortunately. Regrettably. To arrive. To get to your destination. To schedule. To make a plan to do. Quickly, at the earliest time possible. As soon as. Vehicles driving on the road around the same area. Traffic. Quickly, at the earliest time possible. As soon as. To get to your destination. To arrive. Quickly, at the earliest time possible. As soon as. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 19, Arriving to an Appointment and Notifying the Receptionist. In this lesson, you'll learn how to tell a receptionist you've arrived for an appointment. The following conversation takes place at the reception counter. It's between a receptionist and Linda. The speakers are strangers. Therefore, they will speak informal English. Good evening. 
Good evening. I'm Linda Baker from Green and Blue. I have an appointment with Mr. Henderson at five o'clock. We spoke over the phone earlier. Yes. Let me check. Please take a seat in the hall. Mr. Henderson will be with you in a few minutes. Would you like something to drink? No, thank you. Listen to the conversation one time slowly. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Linda Baker from Green and Blue. I have an appointment with Mr. Henderson at five o'clock. We spoke over the phone earlier. Yes, let me check. Please take a seat in the hall. Mr. Henderson will be with you in a few minutes. Would you like something to drink? No, thank you. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is to check, to confirm, to look at, to check, to check. Next we have to take, to have, to obtain, to take, to take. Next we have seat, a chair, a place to sit, seat, seat. Next we have hall. A corridor or passageway in a building. Hall, hall. Next we have few, not many. Few, few. And lastly, something, an unknown or unidentified thing. Something, something. In this lesson, you'll learn how to tell a receptionist that you've arrived for an appointment. There will be times where you have to visit another company or go to places like a doctor or dentist's office. Usually, you need to make an appointment in advance to do this, so make sure to arrive at least five to ten minutes early for your appointment. When you arrive, you will probably be greeted by a receptionist and should tell the receptionist that you have an appointment. There are two things to remember. The first is that when you talk about time, you use the preposition at, for example, at three o'clock or at ten a.m. The second is that when you talk about people, you use the preposition with. For example, with Mr. Baker, with Ms. Smith. So, what can we say to the receptionist? You can say, "I have an appointment," and then follow with the time and the person you are meeting with. It doesn't matter if you say the time or person first. You should also start the sentence by saying, "Excuse me." Can you give us a couple of examples? For example, you can say, "Excuse me, I have an appointment at 10 a.m. with Mr. Baker." Or, excuse me, I have an appointment at three o'clock with Miss Smith. Let's see what to say in the case that we are in the position of the person who receives the visitor. You should start by welcoming them to the building and asking if they need help. For example, you could say, "Welcome to the ABC Company. How may I help you?" Or, "Welcome to the ABC Company. How may I be of assistance?" After they introduce themselves, how can we ask them to wait while we double check their data? You can say. Let me check the details. I won't be a moment. If they have to wait, what can we say? First, make sure to offer any refreshments if available. You could say, "Can I offer you anything to drink?" or "Do you want a coffee?" Then you could say, "Mr. Baker will see you shortly," or "Mr. Baker will be with you soon." And of course, we should make sure that they are comfortable. Right. You could say, "Please take a seat," or "Please sit down." Let's repeat the whole set of phrases together. Mr. Baker will be with you in a moment, so please take a seat. Can I offer you anything to drink? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Linda Baker from Green and Blue. I have an appointment with Mr. Henderson at five o'clock. We spoke over the phone earlier. Yes. Let me check. Please take a seat in the hall. Mr. Henderson will be with you in a few minutes. Would you like something to drink? No, thank you. Practice with the review track. Arriving to an appointment and notifying the receptionist. 
Seat. A chair, a place to sit. To check. To confirm, to look at. Few. Not many. Something. An unknown or unidentified thing. Hall. A corridor or passageway in a building. To have, to obtain. To take. A corridor or passageway in a building. Hall. Not many. Few. To have, to obtain. To take. A chair, a place to sit. Seat. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 20, Asking for Directions at an Office. In this lesson, you'll learn about asking where an office is. The following conversation takes place in an office lobby. It's between Linda and a receptionist. The speakers are strangers, therefore they will speak formal English. Mrs. Baker, you can go ahead. What floor is Mr. Henderson's office on? He's waiting for you on the third floor. Where are the stairs? You can use the elevator down the hall to the left. Thank you for your help. Listen to the conversation one time slowly. Mrs. Baker, you can go ahead. What floor is Mr. Henderson's office on? He's waiting for you on the third floor. Where are the stairs? You can use the elevator down the hall to the left. Thank you for your help. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... To go. To move or travel to. To go. To go. Next we have... Ahead. In a forward direction or position. Ahead. Ahead. Next we have... Floor. A level in a building. Floor. Floor. Next we have... To wait. To stay in the same place until an action happens. To wait. To wait. Next we have... Third. Constituting the number three in some sequence. Third. Third. Next we have... Stairs. A series of steps that lead to another floor. Stairs. Stairs. Next we have... Elevator. A machine that carries people and objects between floors in a building. Elevator. Elevator. And lastly... Down. A lower position. Down. Down. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask where an office is. If you are visiting a company or are new to the office, chances are you won't know where everything is. If that's the case, you might have to ask for directions. The key phrases when asking for directions are where is or where are, followed by the name of the place or person. You can use these phrases no matter what you are looking for, from a big building to a pen. Let's give some examples. Where is ABC Company? Or, where are the paper clips? There are a few other ways you can ask for directions, too. Right. For example, you can say, how do I get to the ABC Company? Or, what floor is the meeting room on? Asking for the address is important, as many people now use Google Maps or in-car GPS for directions. What are some phrases you can use in these cases? 
Can you show me on Google Maps? Or can you put the details into the GPS? Okay, now let's see how to give directions. When giving directions, we need to use prepositions. Let's review together some of the most commonly used prepositions of place and give an example sentence for each. Let's start with next to. For example, you can say, The office is next to the park. Behind. The office is behind the train station. Across from. The office is across from the school. Listeners, you can find a complete list in the lesson notes. Be sure to check it out. Also, instead of saying the name of the place, if people know what you are talking about, it's fine to say, it is or they are. For example, instead of the office is across from the school, you can just say, it's across from the school. Instead of, go down this street and the office is on the left, you can simply say, go down this street and it's on the left. Mrs. Baker, you can go ahead. What floor is Mr. Henderson's office on? He's waiting for you on the third floor. Where are the stairs? You can use the elevator down the hall to the left. Thank you for your help. Practice with the review track. Asking for directions at an office. Ahead. In a forward direction or position. To wait. Stay in the same place until an action happens. Stairs. A series of steps that lead to another floor. Floor. A level in a building. Elevator. A machine that carries people and objects between floors in a building. Constituting the number three in some sequence. Third. A lower position. Down. To move or travel to. To go. Constituting the number three in some sequence. Third. Stay in the same place until an action happens. To wait. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 21. Giving a gift in an American business setting. In this lesson, you'll learn how to handle a gift in a business context. The conversation takes place in an office. It's between Linda and Paul Henderson. The speakers are acquaintances in a business setting. Therefore, they will speak formal English. Please accept this gift from Green and Blue. Thank you. That is very kind of you. Not at all. We periodically give a collection of the newest samples to our clients. Good to know. If you want to sample some of our older products, please let me know. That's very kind of you. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. Please accept this gift from Green and blue. Thank you. That is very kind of you. Not at all. We periodically give a collection of the newest samples to our clients. Good to know. If you want to sample some of our older products, please let me know. That's very kind of you. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... To accept. To willingly receive. To accept. 
to accept. Next we have gift. A present, an object given to someone else. Gift. Gift. Then there's kind. Nice, sympathetic. Kind. Kind. Next up is periodically. From time to time. Periodically. Periodically. Next we have collection. A group of objects accumulated together. Collection. Collection. And lastly, products. Something sold. Products. Products. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to handle a gift in a business context. First, let's look at giving gifts. It's not unusual to give gifts, but as we heard earlier, it's possible that some people can't accept gifts. If you don't know for sure, it might be wise to ask if gifts are accepted. You can do this using the sentence patterns can you and is or are there. Okay, let's hear some full sentences. Can you accept gifts? Is there a rule against you receiving gifts? You can also use are there in that last question. Just remember to make it plural. Are there any rules against you receiving gifts? Yeah, rule is one of those words that you can use in singular or plural, and it doesn't really matter which you use. So now you know they can accept gifts. Here is something you can say when you give a gift. Here is a token of my appreciation. Or, I have a small gift for you. That sentence isn't as polite, but by saying it's a small gift, we're being humble. Which in turn makes it polite. You might want to explain a little bit about the gift too. You can use from to say where you got the gift. These cookies are from Canada. This gift is from the CEO. Now, let's look at receiving gifts. Of course, you should start by saying thank you. Of course. Here are some ways you can say thank you. Thank you for the kind gift. Thank you. It's much appreciated. Depending on time and place, you might not be able to properly look at the gift right away. In that case, you can say, I look forward to opening it later. But if you do look at the gift, you should make a comment about the gift itself. Yes, and sound happy. Always sound happy and thankful, even if you don't want or like the gift. What kind of thing can we say, John? Wow, you shouldn't have. Or, that looks amazing. Thank you. Remember to sound sincere. Please accept this gift from Green and Blue. Thank you. That is very kind of you. Not at all. We periodically give a collection of the newest samples to our clients. Good to know. If you want to sample some of our older products, please let me know. That's very kind of you. Practice with the review track. Giving a gift in an American business setting. Kind. Nice, sympathetic. Gift. A present, an object given to someone else. Collection. A group of objects accumulated together. Products. Something sold. To accept. To willingly receive. From time to time. Periodically. To willingly receive. To accept. Something sold. Products. From time to time. Periodically. To willingly receive. To accept. The 
American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 22, Leaving a Message for a Colleague. In this lesson, you'll learn how to leave a message. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between a receptionist and Linda. The speakers are strangers. Therefore, they will speak formal English. I'm sorry. Mrs. Smith is not coming to the office today. I see. Can I leave a message with you? Yes, go ahead. Please tell her that the consultant has sent the results and that she should get in contact with him. The consultant has sent the results? Okay, I'll get in contact with Mrs. Smith and tell her. Thank you. I'll check in again tomorrow. Listen to the conversation one more time, slowly. I'm sorry. Mrs. Smith is not coming to the office today. I see. Can I leave a message with you? Yes, go ahead. Please tell her that the consultant has sent the results and that she should get in contact with him. The consultant has sent the results? Okay, I'll get in contact with Mrs. Smith and tell her. Thank you. I'll check in again tomorrow. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... To come. To move or go towards a place near the speaker. To come. To come. Next we have... To leave. To go away from a place. To leave. To leave. Next up is... Message. A verbal or written communication usually left for somebody who isn't present. Message. Message. Next there's... Consultant. One who gives professional advice. Consultant. Consultant. Then we have... Result. The outcome of something. Result. Result. Next we have... Contact. Communication. Connection. Contact. Contact. And lastly... To contact. To communicate with someone. To contact. To contact. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to leave a message. If you have to leave a message, you will either leave it with a machine or with a person. If you're talking to a person, first you have to make sure that they can take a message. Often they will offer, but if they don't, you should ask. You can say something like, can I leave a message with you? If you're talking to a machine, you have to remember that you only have a limited time to speak. You need to be quick and to the point, and don't leave any sensitive information in case someone else hears it. The information you leave is your name, company, reason for calling, and how you can be reached. You can keep your reason for calling very brief and general. Yeah, don't go into detail. You can just leave a general statement like... I'm calling to follow up on what we talked about yesterday. Or, I'm checking on the new deal. It's okay to not be as formal in phone messages, as people know that time is limited. What can we say if we want someone to call us back? You should say when you are or aren't available. If you can give me a call back, I'm free after 3 p.m. Or, if you can, can you call me back tomorrow morning? If you don't need them to call you back, you can say, I'll call you again later, or I'll try you again this afternoon. You can say what you're going to do using the pattern, I will, and then your action. Sometimes you might be the person answering the phone and taking the message. Although you don't have the same time constraints as an answering machine, it's still best to get the information quickly. You should ask if the caller wants you to take a message. Shall I take a message? Or do you want to leave a message? If they say yes, grab a pen and paper. You can just make notes and it's fine to ask for them to repeat the information. Yes, we learned some phrases in Lesson 2 to help with repeating information. There is one thing that we didn't cover in Lesson 2, and that is what to do if the company name is a little unusual. This can happen with people's names, too. If you don't know how to spell something, that's fine. Just ask. You can ask directly. How do you spell that? Or, can you spell that for me? Or, if you think you know the spelling but aren't 100% sure, you can say, let me just check the spelling of that. I'm sorry. Mrs. Smith is not coming to the office today. I see. 
Can I leave a message with you? Yes, go ahead. Please tell her that the consultant has sent the results and that she should get in contact with him. The consultant has sent the results? Okay, I'll get in contact with Mrs. Smith and tell her. Thank you. I'll check in again tomorrow. Practice with the review track. Leaving a message for a colleague. Consultant. One who gives professional advice. Contact. Communication. Connection. Message. A verbal or written communication usually left for somebody who isn't present. Result. The outcome of something. To contact. To communicate with someone. To go away from a place. To leave. To move or go towards a place near the speaker. To come. The outcome of something. Result. One who gives professional advice. Consultant. Communication. Connection. Contact. American Business English for Beginners, Season One, Lesson Twenty Three. Offering an invitation. In this lesson, you'll learn how to accept an invitation. The conversation takes place in an office lounge. It's between Linda and Thomas Gray. The speakers are coworkers, therefore they will speak informal English. Do you have any plans for tomorrow night? No, I'm free. After work, all of our coworkers will have dinner at a new restaurant. Do you want to join us? Sure, I'd love to. Good. I'll send you a message with the address and other details. That would be great. Thanks. You're welcome. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. Do you have any plans for tomorrow night? No, I'm free. After work, all of our coworkers will have dinner at a new restaurant. Do you want to join us? Sure, I'd love to. Good, I'll send again. Good, I'll send you a message with the address and other details. That would be great. Thanks. You're welcome. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is plans. Something you intend to do. Plans. Plans. Next we have free. Having no commitments or plans. Free. Free. Next up is coworkers. The people you work with in your company. Coworkers. Coworkers. Next, there's. To join. To connect, become a part of. To join. To join. Then we have. Sure. Having no doubt about something. Sure. Sure. Next, we have. Address. A description of the location of a place. Address. Address. And lastly. Other, not the specified object, a different one. Other, other. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to accept an invitation. Earlier in this lesson, we spoke about formal work parties, such as for Christmas and New Year's. 
and also informal events such as a coworker's birthday party or after work drinks. Invitations depend on how formal the event is. For a formal event, invitations are usually in writing. When you accept or decline the invitation, you should also do it in writing by the deadline. If you have invited someone and they haven't replied, you can politely remind them. Yes, you can say something like, "Have you received my wedding invitation?" or "Did you get the invite to the company party?" Asking if they have received the invitation instead of asking if they are coming is more polite. If it's an informal party, you don't need to invite people in writing. No, you can just ask them using phrases such as "I'm having" or "I'm holding." I'm having a birthday party or I'm holding a housewarming party. If it is a work party that you have organized or are telling people about, you can use there is. There is a New Year's party. To add in extra information about time and date, you need to use prepositions. Use the preposition on for days. On Monday, for time and place you use at at 3 p.m. at the Italian restaurant. In really informal invites, these prepositions are often dropped. Let's hear some examples. I'm having a birthday party on Saturday at 7 p.m. at the Italian restaurant across the street, and I'm holding a housewarming party Saturday, 7 p.m. my place. To accept an informal invitation, you can just reply verbally. Sure, sounds great. Thank you. I'd love to. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. I'd love to come. And if you want to know how to decline, That will be in a later lesson. Do you have any plans for tomorrow night? No, I'm free. After work, all of our coworkers will have dinner at a new restaurant. Do you want to join us? Sure, I'd love to. Good. I'll send you a message with the address and other details. That would be great. Thanks. You're welcome. Practice with the review track. Offering an invitation. Address. A description of the location of a place. Sure. Having no doubt about something. Подоконник. Window sill. Plans. Something you intend to do. Other. Not the specified object, a different one. The people you work with in your company. Co-workers. Having no commitments or plans. Free. The people you work with in your company. Co-workers. Windowsill. Подоконник. The people you work with in your company. Co-workers. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 24, Making Small Talk in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to inquire about one's likes and dislikes. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Thomas Gray and Linda. The speakers are friends. Therefore, they will speak informal English. I'm sorry to ask, Linda, but where are we meeting tonight? You can meet us at the restaurant. Just to confirm, what time do we need to be there by? By 7 p.m. It's the Thai restaurant right by the subway. Do you like spicy food? Yes, I do. I love Thai cooking. It's a really good restaurant, so I'm sure you'll love it. Listen to the conversation one more time, slowly. I'm sorry to ask, Linda, but 
Where are we meeting tonight? You can meet us at the restaurant. Just to confirm, what time do we need to be there by? By 7 p.m. It's the Thai restaurant right by the subway. Do you like spicy food? Yes, I do. I love Thai cooking. It's a really good restaurant, so I'm sure you'll love it. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is to ask, to request something from someone, to ask, to ask. Next, we have to meet. To come into the presence of someone. To meet. To meet. Next up is subway. Underground train in a city. Subway. Subway. Next, there's to confirm. To double check to make sure. To confirm. To confirm. Next, we have by. Not later than. By. By. And lastly, cooking, food prepared in a particular way. Cooking, cooking. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to inquire about one's likes and dislikes. If you go out for a meal with someone, you might need to know what food they like and don't like. And there are many other occasions where you might need to know someone's likes and dislikes. Plus, it's good for small talk. Right. You can ask someone using the phrase "Do you like?" followed by a noun. Let's hear some examples. Do you like pizza? Do you like sports? You can also ask about a topic such as food or animals. You can do this using "Which group do you like?" or "What group do you like?" For example, "What sport do you like?" or "Which season do you like?" You use "which" when you are asking someone to choose from a set group of options. There are only four seasons, so this is a set group of options and using which. However, there are so many sports that we can't count them, so we use what. You can also ask for preference between two options with which do you like, A or B. For example, which do you like, Italian food or Chinese food? An informal way of asking is how do you feel about, how do you feel about the Yankees? You can answer these questions with some simple sentences. Yes, what you need to remember is I like and I don't like. For example, I like football. Or I don't like Chinese food. You can give more details and level up your English by saying I think that and using an adjective. I think that football is exciting. Or I think that Chinese food isn't good. I'm sorry to ask, Linda, but where are we meeting tonight? You can meet us at the restaurant. Just to confirm, what time do we need to be there by? By 7 p.m. It's the Thai restaurant right by the subway. Do you like spicy food? Yes, I do. I love Thai cooking. It's a really good restaurant, so I'm sure you'll love it. Practice with the review track. Making small talk in English. To confirm. To double check. To make sure. To meet. To come into the presence of someone. Subway. Underground train in a city. Cooking. Food prepared in a particular way. By. Not later than. To request something from someone. To ask. Not later than.
Bye. To come into the presence of someone. To meet. Not later than. Bye. To come into the presence of someone. To meet. American Business English for Beginners, Season 1, Lesson 25. Politely declining an invitation in English. In this lesson, you'll learn how to politely decline an invitation. The conversation takes place at an office. It's between Linda and John Sullivan. The speakers are coworkers, therefore, they will speak informal English. Do you have time tonight? We're having a little party for Mr. Henderson. I'm really sorry, but I have another commitment tonight. I see. Don't worry. Maybe some other time. I won't miss it next time. Have a nice evening. We will. Thank you. Listen to the conversation one more time slowly. Do you have time tonight? We're having a little party for Mr. Henderson. I'm really sorry, but I have another commitment tonight. I see. Don't worry. Maybe some other time. I won't miss it next time. Have a nice evening. We will. Thank you. Let's take a look at the vocabulary from this lesson. The first word is... Time. Time as measured in hours and minutes. Time. Time. Next we have... Party. A social get-together, often to celebrate something. Party. Party. Next up is... Another. One in addition. Another. Another. Next there's... Commitment. Something you agreed to do. Commitment. Commitment. Next we have... To worry. To feel concerned about something. To worry. To worry. And lastly... To see. To be aware of. To see. To see. In this lesson, you'll learn about how to politely decline an invitation. In the last lesson, we learned about making and accepting invitations. We said that we'd learn how to decline invitations in a later lesson. So let's learn about that now. The main thing to remember is to always be polite. Yes, be thankful for the invite and show regret that you can't go. How do we politely decline? As always, you should say, thank you. You really can't say thank you enough sometimes. And then follow that up by declining. Thank you for the kind invite, but I can't attend. Thanks for the invite, but I can't make it. That example from Becky is kind of informal, but would still be okay to use in most circumstances. Although these sentences are polite, it might be seen as a little rude if you don't give a reason why you are declining the invitation. The reason doesn't have to be specific, but you should say something. The most common reason is being busy. Right, you can say, I already have plans, or I'm already doing something that day. It might be that your reason for declining is that you don't want to go, but whatever you do, don't say that. No, just say, I'm busy, or something like that. Nobody will question you. After apologizing and giving a reason, you should show regret that you can't go. Make it sound like you want to go, even if you don't. Let's hear an example of what you can say. Sorry, I can't make it. Maybe next time. Sounds like it'll be great. I'm sad to miss it. I hope you all have a great time. Some other time, maybe. Do you have time tonight? We're having a little party for Mr. Henderson. I'm really sorry, but I have another commitment tonight. I see. Don't worry. Maybe some other time. I won't miss it next time. Have a nice evening. We will. Thank you. Practice with the review track.
politely declining an invitation in English. Commitment Something you agree to do. To see. To be aware of. Party. A social get together, often to celebrate something. Another. One in addition. Worry. To feel concerned about something. A social get together, often to celebrate something. Party. To be aware of. To see. A social get together, often to celebrate something. Party. To be aware of. To see. A social get together, often to celebrate something. Party.